An update on the upcoming elections in the Democratic Republic of Congo. I am joined from Kinshasa by my VOA colleague, Abdul Rahman Dia. Good evening, Abdul. Good evening, Shaka. How are you? Well, uh, busy. Yeah, that's the least we can say. <laughs> now, give us a sense of the mood on the ground. Right. Um, I have to say that um, uh, the, the atmosphere has uh, basically changed in, in the last 24 hours because uh, people were expecting the, the first, uh, uh, last big meeting uh, from a major candidate today. Uh, so um, in the middle of the day, we got news that uh, the meeting was not going to happen because um, the, the government said that based on uh, some credible information, there could be trouble. And then uh, a few minutes later, we got that communique from the, the government basically saying that, um, that all campaign activities from the presidential candidates are uh, suspended, whereas we, ha we still have uh, two days to go before the end of the campaign. So that's where we are. So I just came from the, the place where Martin Fayulu was supposed to have his uh, uh, big meeting with his big rally. Uh, people were still there, uh, some uh, very disappointed, but still trying to make the best of it, you know, with a lot of chanting and music and all of that. So that's where we are today. When you talk to people, and I'm sure you've talked to a lot of people downtown Kinshasa, do you get the sense that uh, people are anxiously waiting to cast their vote? Or is there tension, as some reporters have suggested? Well, I think you have both. Some people really do want to, to have a free and fair election and peaceful on Sunday so they can go and cast their ballot. At the same time, uh, there are uh, many who think that anything can happen between uh, now and Sunday. So um, people are kind of hanging on, on the thread there. They don't know what's going to happen. And uh, the situation that happened today with the uh, suspension of all campaign activities in, uh, in Kinshasa just added a little bit more to, uh, to that uh, kind of a worry that uh, things might not go as smoothly as they were hoping. Now, most elections uh, in the DRC historically have actually been contested. Uh, do you get the sense again when you talk with people that uh, they sincerely feel that at the end of the day, when they cast their vote, that vote is going to count? Well, uh, I think it depends on who you talk to. And if you... If it's based on the last two elections um, uh, that were very violent, uh, you know, some people are not very hopeful. They think the same could happen. Others are still hanging on to some hope that, you know, things can, uh, can go without violence, which doesn't mean that it would go fairly, but it could go without violence, depending on how much security there is out there and how determined the, the opposition is, is to, 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 to have a free and fair election. So it's uh, anybody's guess, really. Now, Abdul, there was a fire reported to have burnt a lot of documents and what have you. What can you tell us about that? Well, um, it's starting to be a little bit of old news here. Uh, the main thing is people are kind of waiting to see if uh, all the material, uh, the electoral material, that is supposed to come from uh, Johannesburg is going to be here on time. We know that they, they were already behind on schedule, uh, and the election commission uh, officials uh, have acknowledged that as well. Uh, so, but they don't know, even if it, everything gets here on, uh, in Kinshasa, they don't know how it's going to be dispatched in all parts of the country. It is a big country, and there are uh, about 80,000 polling stations. So that is a big challenge there. Do we have the sense as to who was behind that fire? Because there have been a lot of people who seem to be pointing fingers to DRC authorities. It's a pointing finger game. Uh, the, the, the government is basically uh, naming Martin Fayulu because they are saying that he was the one calling uh, for the destruction of these uh, voting machines. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the opposition is suspecting that uh, the authorities may be behind it, so they, uh, going into Sunday, things might be just chaos in, in Kinshasa, knowing that 
uh, traditionally Kinshasa is a stronghold of, of the opposition. Now, from what you have judged uh, in terms of uh, your interaction and what have you, do you again get the sense that uh, this is an election about certain specific issues or is it about personalities? Hmm, that's a very, very interesting question. Uh, if, you, if you look at uh, what they are posting on social media, the main candidates, they try to talk about the issues, actually. Uh, infrastructure, uh, security concern in the eastern part of the country and in the Kasai uh, province, uh, as well as unemployment. They all have, have it out there. Unfortunately, I think uh, it's not getting much attention because of uh, uh, the situation and all those accusations uh, and suspicion going around. So it's hard, really, for everybody to focus on the real issue. But they all have, uh, you know, pretty much uh, programs that showcase uh, hundreds and thousands uh, uh, of, I mean, a lot of money out there to, to, to spend, especially on infrastructure and try to, to develop the country. But it's not getting the attention it is supposed to. Now, Abdul, you are talking about a country that is incredibly worth, and yet people seem to be incredibly poor. Do people right. talk about some of those apparent contradictions? Why is the Congo very mm. rich to the extent, in fact, that uh, some scholars at one time uh, characterized it as uh, a geological embarrassment, and yet there's nothing to show for it as far as people are concerned mm. on the ground? I have been hearing that uh, from a lot of people since I got here, actually. Uh, people just don't see why this country is still where it is. Uh, if, and poverty is a reality. I just come from uh, Njili, around the airport area, trying to, to go back to the downtown area. It is complicated, and people are walking, not having transportation. It's, it's jam, traffic jam. It is really a reality, poverty. And yet, as you said, uh, it is a very rich country. So people do know that, um, yes. But that, that's the reality. Now, I would again, uh, there was a time when scholars uh, went to the DRC and uh, interviewed people. And people were complaining about this thing called independence. In fact, they were quoted to have said, when is this thing called independence going to come to an end? They were saying that precisely because they said during colonialism, they would find some essential commodities around the corner. But during that time, and we are talking about the 80s, there was nothing really uh, to expect. What are people talking about, about the politics um, of the belly, the politics of the stomach? Hmm. Well, yeah. <laughs> and also the illustration there, I think, is that you have 21 candidates uh, for the presidency. Only three are very visible and basically campaigning around the country. Many of them could find the $100,000 to put down in order to, be, uh, to, to have the candidacy accepted. But they, they are not campaigning. Uh, some are interpreting it as um, just a way to get attention from uh, the future, future leaders, the future president. They are hoping that we'll get uh, a ministry or something out of it. But a lot of people are out there saying they are candidates, but no one is seeing them. So that is, in my view, one of the illustrations that, you know, showcase what you're just saying. What about uh, the people that are in charge of organizing the election? How have they fared so far? Well, uh, the last couple of days, it's been hard to, to talk to any of them. Uh, I called uh, uh, the rapporteur who promised to call me back because he said he, was, uh, he had an urgent issue on his hands, so I don't know what that meant. But it, the, the last thing they said was that they were trying to get everything in order that people shouldn't worry, the election should happen uh, and will happen. But um, there are a lot of issues, and they did acknowledge it, but they are saying that they can make it. So that's, uh, that's the situation. Do they have confidence uh, in the Electoral Commission's ability, for example, to deliver a free, fair, and credible election at the end of the day? Uh, 
a lot of opposition supporters uh, are not convinced. Of course, those support who are on the other side say that they have nothing to do with it, and it's uh, up to the election commission to decide whether they can go ahead with uh, with it or not. So they are putting their trust on them. That's the official line. Uh, but a lot of opposition uh, supporters are not very convinced. I know that uh, you have covered several elections in other countries and what have you. From what you have been able to see, what have you been able to learn that you think is very important to share with our audience? Hmm, that, that, is, uh, that is hard because uh, uh, the election that I have covered before, uh, mainly Senegal and Mali, Mali was a country that was going through uh, conflict right after the, um, the, the jihadist uh, insurrection back in 2013. So it was a different uh, situation. Here, they, they do have conflict in some part of the country, but basically it's not like an invasion in Kinshasa or anything. So there is nothing that could explain, in my view, the fact that they cannot have free and fair elections. So... I mean, usually instability is used as an excuse. That's, uh, that's what I think. Well, thank you very much uh, for the good job so far. And do 